Hi. Hey. As you know, many dance students struggle with a lot of challenges along their way to a professional career. I'd love to hear about a challenge that you specifically had and even how you overcame it or are just continue to work on overcoming it. Totally. So yeah, I, I think I definitely throughout my training struggle a little bit with body image. Mm -hmm. I think I have, there were like a few instances where it was like introduced to me. And I, I specifically remember when I was about 11, I was at um, a summer intensive and I wanted to attend the year round program. And they were like, oh, you can't attend because you're too tall. And mm. I was like, I'm 11. Like, how do you know how tall I'm going to be? I mean, I had a huge growth spurt. I was probably the height I am now. I was very tall. But, like, <laughs> it just was the first time someone pointed out something about my body that I was yeah. definitely not in control of in that situation. But also just like, oh, there's something different about me. Right. And then, so then that was the first thing. I was like, great. So now I no, I'm a tall dancer, right? I'm a taller, bigger dancer. Um, when I was about 15 or 16, I, um, I um, got, I went home for a break from my school from training. And I think I got my wisdom teeth out. And I um, was um, like, you know, not eating solid foods for a long time. So I came back. Um, and I remember them being like, wow, you look amazing. Like I had lost all this weight and I looked and they gave me a roll and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Like, yeah. okay. And then in that same year, I think it was that same year, I had kind of just started to like fill out a little, like I was becoming more of a woman. And I, um, they pulled me and my mom aside and they were like, you need to tone down a little bit. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? And they were like, you specifically, like you need to tone down your legs. Wow. And I remember being like, how do you tone down your legs? Like, how do you like isolate <laughs> that? It just is all so confusing to me. But so yeah. that whole like training period, I remember my mom and I like went on these kind of like health kick diets and like tried these different things. And um, so that was, and then like all through my training, I just, food is very social for me. So like I would be out with my friends and we would go to a diner and I would eat like a big thing of pancakes. And like, I don't know, it was just a very social thing, but also I was being told like, you need to tone down at the same time. But that like wasn't really an option for me. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think you bring up so many points. Like the first point is that you immediately something was brought to your attention, like your height, that is obviously out of your control. I think a lot of dancers don't realize that even just their body shape and their body type is out of their control. And when they develop these habits, like going on those fad diets to try and control, to try and quote unquote, like you said, tone um, their body type, they end up falling into these behaviors that are just not sustainable and it could really impact their future career. And another thing that you brought up, which I think is such an important point, is that dance teachers and dance directors and choreographers have to be very careful with what they say because you came back and you had lost weight. You didn't necessarily lose weight for the best reason, right? You weren't eating. You were, you were stuck on a diet of liquids because you could not physically eat from getting your wisdom teeth taken. That's not fun. Food is social. There's no way you can be social after um, having your wisdom teeth taken out. I so remember I think crying because I couldn't have Christmas cookies. Like, I was so sad because <laughs> I couldn't eat the Christmas cookies. Obviously, with the industry in of itself needs work um, in addition to just the individual dancer needing to just build their own confidence around their food choices, how their body looks, and how their body is developing and growing from going through puberty. And to that point, what you said about words being effective, I also, so another, the, probably the biggest thing that hit me went throughout my training um, was when I joined the company at age 17, we had to go through these physical evaluations and mm -hmm. they were just kind of like to make sure your body was okay and just kind of get a like base level of where you're at. Um, and most companies now, I think, do that. That was kind of a new thing when I joined. Um, but so the doctor, he was very old and he was testing my quad strength and he had me mm -hmm. like straighten my leg and he goes oh wow you have thunder thighs immediately like my eyes welling up and being like <laughs> the PT was like you can't say that to her and he goes oh don't worry women all over the world would love to have thunder thighs like yours and I here's like a 17 year old 
like yeah. styling ballerina because yeah. like, I don't want to be like women all over the world I want to be a ballerina and you're yeah. telling me I have thunder thighs like yeah. you that was so inappropriate yeah and I, he also I, told me in that same meeting I had peasant feet like it was a very oh very, oh very <laughs> traumatic experience <laughs> you know so. I, I think it just goes to show you you know for any dance teachers dance educators doctors dance medicine professionals it just goes to show you that our language is so important in your training was there a specific point that you can remember where you started to translate like okay my decisions on my plate are impacting this so i have to have more control over what i eat i mean i definitely when i was younger right like these things that people told me very much affected me and like mm -hmm. to this day they still affect me there are things right. that like I, it's the first thing I look at, right, are my thighs. Like, the first thing I'm like, oh, my thighs are bigger than the next girl's thighs because some right. doctor told me I have thunder thighs. So right. those things really stay with you. And I think those things, um, and just, I was aware, I'm, I was aware I was a taller, bigger dancer. Someone had told me I was bigger. Like, these just, these things really stay with you. For me, it never really, like, again, like, food was such a big part of my life with my mm -hmm. social and with my family that it never really translated into, like, this is what's on your plate. Like I still enjoyed eating food with my family. And that's what it came down to is like that I loved sitting down with a meal. I think what more changed is my ability to recognize what these people had pointed as like possible flaws. I actually was able to like turn them into really positive, beautiful, wonderful things. Mm -hmm. Like my thighs allow me to do really amazing, incredible things that like, other people can't do. This is amazing. I can't stress it enough to any dancer anyone in general that thoughts about body image and body dysmorphia, it's not something that ever goes away. It's something that you have to learn how to rewire your brain and retranslate the information that you were either someone else or thinking of on your own and translate it into, okay, well, that's coming from disorder thinking. And I don't want to translate that into disordered eating because that's not going to help or fuel my dancing. So how can I think about that? And you thinking about, well, you know, these guys are going to get me through a three hour performance. They're not going to do that for the general population. Yeah. Thinking like, okay, I'm still success. Like I've been, this body has allowed me to be successful and without having to like lose a bunch of weight or like tone down my thigh, like do all these things. Like somehow I was still being successful. So I had to like change my, my approach and be like, what about me? Obviously there's something about these attributes that mm -hmm. is actually very positive, right? Like I am able to, because I'm taller, because I'm a little bit bigger, like I'm able to command a stage like a smaller little petite dancer might not be able to, like you're never gonna lose me on stage. <laughs> so there's so many things that like I was able to take what people have told me and take these things that people have turned into probably like very negative um, things and turn them around and use them as to my benefit and like use them mm -hmm. as, positive things that I think are really special about me. Um, mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that's super important is like, because it, again, it wasn't about like changing my diet. It was about changing my perspective and changing what I thought about myself. Yeah. I mean, that, that is everything right there because it, it is so easy. And my next question that you already covered, which was basically, you know, as dancers, we do face pressure around body. And most often that does translate into adjusting our food intake. And you just said it right there. It's not a matter of translating these comments or the comments you might make up in your own head to changing what's on your plate. It's a matter of changing your perspective and realize that body type, body shape, body height, these are factors that are not in your long-term control. And, and, it's, and it's critical if a dancer really does want a successful career that they let go of that a bit and they start to focus on these positive attributes that are going to get them through, you know, years of intense training and get them to audition and through auditions. Also, I think there's a point of also recognizing, like, recognizing your body and recognizing, like, where you do fit in. Like, I fit in an American Ballet Theater very well because there are very a vast differences of body types and we're accepting yeah. of all body types. But there are other particular companies and places that aren't the same and that aren't necessarily as they like petite dancers or they really like tall dancers. So I think there's a, there's a, great ownership and accepting and knowing your body and knowing right. this is what my body is. And it's like you said, a lot of it's genetics and you can't right. change that. Like I can't change that I'm five, seven. That's not going to change. Sure. I can't change that my legs are a little muscular. That's not going to change. So like knowing where, what your body is helps you kind of decide where you want to 
end up in a company and just like where you will fit in and feel most comfortable and confident. Yeah, I think a lot of dancers get nervous about that or don't necessarily want to hear that. It's like the elephant in the room um, that sometimes a company or a school just might not be the right environment. And it could be a really hard thing to accept that they're either aiming for or currently in a very unhealthy environment. And it's important to start identifying which environments are going to be more accepting and, and just healthier. I would love for you to walk us through a sample day of, you know, how you fuel. Yeah. So I'll start with the day at the Met season. Sure. Uh, so yeah, during Met season, during on performance days, it's honestly like really difficult to eat. Like there's so many times where you're just kind of forcing yourself to eat and like gagging the food down because you're so nervous, right? You have these mm -hmm. things that are like <laughs> mm -hmm. focused on so many other things that food is the last thing you want to do. And you're just kind of like, right. yeah. But so for me, I've kind of figured out what works for me. And so I, I love egg sandwiches. One of my favorite things also to do is like get the day of a show is to get to the theater a little bit early and eat my egg sandwich and sew my point shoes for the show. Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of a little bit of like me time where I can eat and get ready and prep my shoes. And so that's just like a weird little thing I do. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but then um, my pre-show meal is very strange. And actually my boyfriend's always like, that's so weird. Why would you eat that? But I love to eat sushi. There's like a great little like... Um, grocery store near the Met that sells really delicious sushi. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'll have some sushi and just maybe um, some chips uh, or some nuts or something like that. And then I always before so that's like a few hours before the show before I start to get ready and then I get ready and then right before the show I usually eat like half a banana because mm -hmm. by the time I've like gotten ready and about to go out on stage I'm already starving again because you burn so many mm -hmm. calories just being nervous. <laughs> and then ready adrenaline probably yeah and then so I keep like half I keep half of the banana for the middle of the show and I usually <laughs> always have half a banana during the intermission um just <laughs> because you know your blood sugar drop and for me it's like I will start to make stupid mistakes and like my like I'll start to do stupid things unless I've had something to replenish myself mm -hmm. um so yeah I'll a banana is huge for me and also like my dresser keeps one just in case for me on mm -hmm. like, backstage and um, and then just drinking, like I said, drinking tons of water and there's like an electrolyte I drink, I like to drink. And um, so just that kind of stuff. And then post show is probably my biggest meal of the day. And that's where for me, it's such a social, again, it's such a social thing. Like my favorite mm -hmm. part, one of my favorite parts about performing is my parents come to almost every show that I do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. after the show, I get to go out and like have a really nice, be like big meal with them and just yeah. talk about the show or talk about the light. We talk about everything. Just, it's such a yeah. like um, time to kind of decompress and have the people that I love with me um, sharing that experience with me. So that's a huge huge part of my um like uh show ritual is like definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to that after mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. I mean first of all I love that you correlate food to a social aspect because that falls through the cracks when we see a lot of younger dancers who are training um again thinking they need to resort to more extreme dieting routines and then they get in this these behaviors where like we can't stray from this routine and eating at a restaurant gets very nerve wracking. Whereas you're now saying, no, let's take that opportunity. That's a social aspect. That's your decompression. I mean, after a show, I know with most of your shows, when you do them at the Met, they can end as late as 10 30, 11. Um, but you're still taking that opportunity. You're taking advantage. That's also a recovery meal for your body, right? So it makes sense that you wouldn't want to have this huge meal prior to the show because it would probably not feel so good while you're on stage. You're kind of like having these wholesome snacks before and throughout. And then afterwards, you're really taking that as an opportunity to just recover and decompress and just enjoy the social yeah. aspect. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's just, it's so important. I think also like to, it, it's, it makes it, um, to enjoy that time with my family and like we share food and it's just, I don't know, it's like, it's a real, like you said, decompression time. So I think it's so important to like kind of also take yourself out of like, okay, I performed, but now I'm like back to like life. Like yeah. I have a life, I have an identity and a life outside of what of I just did. So I think that also helps. I imagine being on stage like that, uh, you know, in one of the classics, it really transcends you in another place. So then to like, after the show have like, 
um, I forgot who I was talking to last week. Who was like the Mexicana is like her favorite post performance restaurant, and I'm like, I get that. It kind of brings you back to the ground, back to normalcy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now, how about during COVID? How have you been handling your date just while being more at home and being in quarantine? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a transition. Like, it's been. Mm -hmm. um, uh, interesting but for me what's been really cool is I actually so I actually hate cooking and like it's a known fact amongst my friends that I'm a horrible mm -hmm. cook and I don't like doing it it's more just like I'm a clean freak and I hate cleaning up after right. so actually what's been really cool is, is quarantine has allowed me a lot more time to cook and I've really sure. enjoyed cooking which has been so fun so I've Great. really started to kind of like find some recipes that I really like and also just start to like hone in on those so that when we do get back to normal life, um, that it will all hopefully be able to like continue doing those things and continue. Quick. They'll be so habitual that I can like <laughs> just whip them up quickly. Um, so that has been really fun for me is kind of learning the joy of cooking and like not being afraid of it and not being, um, yeah, not being so like worried about making a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Which is also important, I think, because it also helps you experiment with flavors and experiment with food in general and you it does allow for control over what you're what you're making and you're learning and you're experimenting out it. so I think that can be very beneficial yeah yeah and then um so you spoke about let's see we spoke about mid-performance you said that most often you like to have something like a banana because it helps to replenish your blood sugar which is important and also even your potassium even have some electrolytes in there any other mid-performance things you usually do or is that pretty much it? um pretty much it like I said a banana sometimes if some maybe some nuts if I have mm -hmm. them um but mostly that is the biggest thing I think I mean I remember like it's so funny I remember like going on stage once and just turning to my dress and being like I'm starving and she's like did you have mm -hmm. a banana and I'm like no and I'm, oh darn so I just have learned and even even throughout the rehearsal day like um, since I have um, start, started dating my boyfriend, who's also a dancer, we rehearse a lot together. And he'll be like, did you have a snack before rehearsal? Because I'll get like very hangry or like start to not like, um, not to like remember things correctly. So there's so much for me about like keeping my blood sugar up and keeping just like a nice like, it yeah. like helps my mood. <laughs> really important with that is that sometimes you probably have to be like actively thinking about having that snack because sometimes I think you could probably get so busy in your rehearsals and just like even just if you were navigating from rehearsals to your performance you could really a lot of dancers do forget to eat it's it's a normal thing yeah. to have I think that you have to be very much on top of making sure that you're you're keeping up with your blood sugar so that you don't end up on stage and being like I'm so hungry or even light-headed right exactly yeah yeah that's that's a great point so my final question would be how you would define what a healthy dancer is. Yeah, that's a super loaded question. <laughs> um, no, I think for me, the biggest thing I think a healthy dancer is, is like, I think mentally healthy is huge. And I think identifying, like being aware that you're not just a dancer, but you're a human is like as uh, sorry not that dancers aren't human but like you have a life outside of dance and you yeah. are yeah. like I'm a daughter I'm a girlfriend I'm a dog mom like what are my other qualities that help me gain perspective in my life that keep me from getting too like honed in on me as Devin the dancer mm -hmm. because I think we can get so so like one track minded and yeah. then that's where you start to run into these potentially health issues mm -hmm. because you're just like um you're just kind of focusing so much on that and not thinking about like um, you as an individual and mm -hmm. like as a person and what you can be. So I think a healthy dancer is just a really like well-rounded, um, well-rounded individual and a mm -hmm. mentally strong, healthy, healthy person. It is so easy for dancers to be one track minded and just be overly focused on wanting to perfect their technique or on wanting to get into whether it's just getting into more intensive getting into a company eventually or getting a specific role and I think that they can easily forget that there's so much more to a dancer's life you know having a social life being a mom um, all of these little things that really do play a part in your identity so dancers should have this balance because that's what's gonna that's what's gonna prevent them from burnout down the road I think burnout is something that's not often talked about 
in the dance world. Um, and I think we should talk about it more just because a lot of dancers are at risk for being perfectionists um, and wanting to be so zoned and one track minded, which is great. They obviously want to uh, do well in their career, but at the same time, they could fall into to some pretty unhealthy, very restrictive, just not fun habits. Right. And I think like when you're so one track minded, it actually takes away from your ability as a dancer and your, um, when you, you know, read more, learn more, when you're just a more well-rounded person and you have more interests, you can bring all of that into your dancing and it gives you more depth in your dancing, Absolutely. it gives you more, you know, um, to pull from in your artistry and all these things. So I think, I think if anything, it's actually more important to like, to help those aspects of dancers grow than to just work on our technique. And, mm -hmm. to, you know, I think it's more important for us to focus on like, other aspects of dance and other aspects of um, a dancer rather than just what you can do physically, right? Because yeah. everyone can do some pretty cool things physically nowadays. Like what more can you bring to people? And right. that is your life experience. Right, it's such a good point, Devin. Thank you so much. You you really raised such incredible perspective today. I really can't thank you enough for that. This was wonderful. It was really wonderful speaking to you and just hearing your perspective, which is so balanced and, and honestly so healthy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's all I want is just people to be healthy and happy yeah. and kind and loving and all the things. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Devin, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Bye-bye.